Hey guys, it's Yvette and I am here with week six for the mini series that Allison Glass and Juicy Juice are doing. And we are getting ready to, gosh, we're getting to the end, right? So after number six, we have two more, number seven and number eight. And then we are going to have two weeks to get our designs together on some sort of project or projects. You can put each one on a different project if you like or you can make one big project, no matter what it is that you wanna do. Um, and that's as long as you're signed up, of course, because if you're all signed up and you post a picture of your final project or projects, then you will get the finisher's pin. So I know we're all looking forward to getting that. I'm really excited about this one because it looks really cool to me. So um, let's get started. Okay, so here I am at the cutting mat and I have everything laid out. I have made a copy of the Triangle Geese, which um, this is our number six in the series. And I'm really excited about this one. I don't know, there's just something about the way it looks. I love how it comes out. Um, and especially if you are going to do six and make a hexagon, those come out really nice. Like I saw the one that Giuseppe did and um, I think he did it on a pillow. I think it was a pillow. And anyway, it was gorgeous and I loved it. So, um, so this one works a little bit different. Um, instead of the, uh, number one being like at the, you know, like the smallest or point or whatever, um, it's actually the largest point. So since I am going to actually stick to the four inch square here, we are actually going to, and I, and actually this is 11 colors and I have 10. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go all the way through the 10 that I have, and then I'm going to make a decision about what I want to be in the last one. And I know that's a little weird, but honestly, I've been standing here for like 10 minutes and I can't make up my mind. So I think I'm going to wait until the whole thing is made and then I'll make a decision on that last color. Okay, so that said, I am going to, uh, so this is the four inch square, right? The tight dotted line. And then the very light dashed line is our quarter inch seam beyond the four inches. So I'm gonna cut this down because I don't wanna like have to worry about um, keeping track of this whole sheet. And I do make sure that I trim it larger than even um, the, quarter inch seam allowance, just because I feel like it makes it easier. Um, so I don't have to worry about, oh, I've gone too far or whatever. Anyway, and I don't go crazy. I just want like, um, maybe like a half inch beyond. Of course, it's trying to see that they draw it on there so light. I mean, look how light that is. I can't, <laughs> I'm thinking, is it, is it me and my eyes? My eyes are bad, but they're not that bad. Um, so I'm just gonna like sort of make a guess here. It's not that big a deal. Um, okay, so I'm gonna trim here. And I am using foundation paper. And I actually discovered using foundation paper doing this series because I, I just always was happy. I thought, oh, I'm happy with, you know, just copy paper, no big deal. And I thought that I would try a few um, to share with you guys what my thoughts were. And oh my goodness, now I'm like addicted to this paper. Like it, it just is, it's better. It's, it's worth it to me. Um, so I think, I, I think I'm, a, um, I'm a convert to foundation paper. <laughs> I'm so happy I tried it. And where did that go? Where is it? Oh, there it is. I'm like, I can't even see it. I really can't, I can't see the darn thing. Okay. So now I've got that trimmed and okay. So since I am going to be going right here to the 19, let me get um, a good pen. Hopefully this one's good. And I am going to be doing the four inch blocks. So I'm going to go to here, which is the line that is, but I just want to like, I'm going to make this line stand out more by making it color. Okay. 
it just helps me. Okay. Oops, there must be something on my mat. I just ran it over with my pen. <laughs> that was that was strange. Okay. So I've got it traced out. And okay, so here's the thing. Whole oh, poop. I just realized something. <laughs> I really do need to make my decision um, because we are going to be, so when you are making this block, okay, if you are not making the whole big block, then when you cut it down to whatever size you want, then you want to start placing your fabric on the smallest number within the area that you are going to be sewing. So in other words, my first piece that I am going to attach is going to be number 19, right? Because number one was way down here and we cut it off. Hold on. Smudgy's trying to jump up on the... Ooh, he drives me crazy. Um, okay, so I do need to know what is it, what it is I'm going to do. Maybe what I'll do is I'll start the bottom on what my last color really is, and then I'll work my way up and then when I get to the top, especially since 39 is now going to be the smallest piece, right? Um, and that's the one that's right up here. So I might end up just doing like two pink pieces or I have plenty of Alice in Glass fabric. I can take a piece that I haven't used yet and pop it up there for like something different. I think that's actually what I'm going to end up doing. Okay, so let's cut our number 19 first, which is our last color, which is, um, let me get a previous, okay, so our last color is this guy right here, and I want to make sure that I'm at least past the quarter inch seam allowance, because, um, because I need something that's going to be there um, to sew onto. Because when I'm going to attach this to anything else, because if I'm making a bag or a pillow or a you know anything that I'm going to make, if there's a possibility that I'm going to have to attach it to something. So I do need to have something that's within that um, seam allowance so that I have a seam to attach to something else. Um, same goes for the bottom. So I'm going to cut... Uh, I'm going to go just beyond this because I can trim it after. And that's going to be the first piece. So the first piece actually doesn't get stitched, right? It just gets placed on the back. And then the number 20 pieces, those are going to be our background. So let me get a couple of pieces of background. And let me see how far. Okay, it looks like it's going to go. I probably just will use that and I'll take the selvage off. Right. So I'll use that piece and let's see, do I have, a, I have this, one of these guys that I kept and I can just, or I can go here. All right. I'm just going to do that. Be real easy just to cut a little piece off and that's what I'm going to use to sew. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay. So here we are with, um, our pattern, our, the template really, and our fabric. Okay, so we're going to be adding number 19 first because that's the lowest number that is on my template that I'm going to use. And before I start, I want to make sure that I shorten my stitch length and I shorten mine to 1.4. That ensures that I am um, punching into the paper close enough together that it's just going to perforate and tear off easily whenever I'm ready to remove the papers. So that's why we do that. Okay, so I'm going to take my number 19 fabric, which is this guy here, and I want to turn this over. And remember, this is where the pretty side of the fabric goes. Since we're not stitching this first sheet, 
uh, I'm sorry, this first piece of fabric, we want to make sure that the pretty side is facing up toward us and facing up on the pretty side of the fabric. Now I want to make sure that I'm going to have, um, first of all I want to make sure that it was wide enough that it covered um, the seam allowance on both sides, which it does. I wanted to make sure that I was going to cover the seam allowance on the bottom, which it does. And even after um, going right there, there's still, as you can see, there's plenty of fabric there. Um, I tend to do that just to so that I don't have to worry about it. There have been so many times, like when I first started uh, foundation paper piecing, I thought that, you know, the goal was to use as small a piece of, of fabric as possible so you don't, like, waste it or whatever. And listen, guys, I am not saying I want to waste fabric, but you only have to have it happen to you a couple times where you cut it too short and then you lost that whole piece anyway. And then you had to, like, cut the whole, you know, use a whole other piece. And it's just, it's better, in my opinion, to make sure that you have plenty of fabric. <laughs> And these, and actually, like, these projects being, like, so small, um, it's easy to use because this is really not a huge piece of fabric. So, um, and especially if you're using scraps, you're really good. Um, okay, so I want to flip it over. And just like before, we know that we have two number 20s, and those are the background pieces. And we want to make sure that we are... Uh, sewing those on, putting the back or the top of the fabric at least an eighth to a quarter inch above the line we're going to sew. And we are going to sew this line right here between number 19 and number 20. So I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to put it to the back of the project and I want to make sure I'm holding that uh, purple fabric really well. And you want to make sure that on um, both the right and the left side, whenever you are doing these projects, not only are you going a quarter inch above the line you're going to sew, but you also want to go at least a quarter inch to either side as well. And especially since these are going, um, well this one right here is just going to have that little bitty piece of background that's going to be added at the end. So we are ready to sew that seam. Okay, so I'm going to lower my needle right to the point. And actually, you know what? It might even be smarter to do it the other way. I'm going I'm to give it a go. Okay, I'm going to give it a go. Why not? Do you want to give it a go? What if I mess it up? Okay, I'm going to flip it the other way. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start from the other side because that is a definite spot. <laughs> Um, okay, so it's down here at the corner, and let's see, did that go? That looks actually perfect. All right, so now I'm going to lower my needle, and I'm going to make one stitch, and then a, a back stitch, and then I'm going to just stitch down to this spot right there and you know it'll be fine everything's gonna be fine guys don't worry about it not being very precise I think it's gonna be okay of course I always say that but then it's always okay I'm going to go there. Backspace. And am I supposed to say backspace? Backstitch. Y'all know what I mean, right? Okay, guys. So here is my first piece that I have just uh, sewn this stitch on. That is our seam allowance. And I am going to flip it over. And this is the one that I just stitched between 19 and 20. So I want to take number 20. I'm going to turn it to the right. And I'm turning it to the right because I'm going to trim this side because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, then you want to take number 20, turn it to the left, flip this back, and then trim this way. 
okay? So you wanna just fold it back on the seam that you just sewed. And then you're going to, oops, where's my, oh geez. I think I put it over here actually. Did I put it over here? Where did I put my add an eighth? I can see my add a quarter. Here it is. Voila! <laughs> or voila! <laughs> okay, so there is a little lip on this special ruler that will actually uh, hitch itself up right on the seam that you just sewed and you just um, put it right against that. There is a little 1 8 inch lip and you're going to trim off everything beyond that. Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to fold back on that seam and I'm gonna go over to the ironing board and press that. Okay, so I have just uh, press that seam and I'm going to take the other piece of silver or my background and I'm now going to uh, sew this line between 19 and the other number 20. So I'm going to take it and put it to the back of the template and I want to make sure it's at least uh, an eighth to a quarter inch above that line so that I have my seam allowance. All right, that looks good. And I'm gonna start from this corner over here because it's just easier. So that's what I'm going to do. It's easier to get right in the corner. So I have just stitched right there, which is this line here. So I'm going to take that number 20 and I'm gonna turn it to the right, fold over on the seam I just sewed, place my ruler and then trim. Okay, so now I'm just going to fold this back and I'm going to press that seam and come right back for our next color. Okay, so I have those pieces on. I'm gonna flip this over and now I'm going to be sewing on number 21. And let's see, the color after this one, it is a different purple and I don't have a piece cut. Okay, so I just want to make sure that I am covering um, the seam allowance and I'll just trim off here somewhere. And I might as well, I think I'm just going to get the backgrounds cut since I have that fabric ready right here. And let me just take off this selvage. And sort of there. I want to make sure I'm getting in the seam allowance so the other side can be like that same size. All right, and let's head over. Okay, so here I am with my next three pieces of fabric. I'm going to move the background over and I'm going to take my um, next printed piece and I'm going to hold it pretty side to me. I'm going to uh, slip it behind the template and I'm adding this to number 21. So I want to make sure that my fabric is at least an eighth to a quarter inch above the line for number 21 and we are ready to sew.
Okay, so here is where I have just stitched. And I was just thinking to myself, I should probably be using like a black thread or something so that you guys can see it. Um, but just take my word for it. It's right there. <laughs> and I've just sewn on number 21. So I'm going to take number 21 and turn it to the right. I'm going to fold back on that seam I just stitched. And I'm going to put my, my ruler down. It keeps getting caught on where I trimmed before. Let's see. I'm going to have to sort of eyeball it and everything. All right, now we got it. It's there. And I'm going to trim the excess. And then I'll just fold this back and go over and press the seam and we're ready for the next one. Okay, so I've pressed that back and now I'm ready to add my background colors. This is the first number 22. We're going to attach it there. Going to move it to the back of the template and place it. And just to be honest, I'm doing a quarter inch <laughs> Might as well stay used to it because every other project you're going to have to do a quarter inch. Um, it's not always like little too tiny pieces like this, you know. Sometimes. Okay, here is the line I just stitched. I'm going to flip that over, and this is the number 22 piece. I'm gonna turn that to the right. Fold back on the, um, the seam that I just stitched. I'm going to put my ruler down and trim the excess. Okay, so now I'm just going to press that back and go pop a hot iron on that. Okay, I've just pressed that back and now we're ready to add the second background piece. I'm going to be adding it here on number 22. So I'm going to take my background piece and pop it to the back of the template. Okay, now we're ready. I don't know where that went. Oh, here it is. <laughs> So here's where I just stitched. It is this line here right under number 22. So I'm going to take that number 22, I'm going to turn it to the right, and I'm going to fold over on the seam I just sewed. And I will trim. And now I'm going to go and press that back. Okay, so I have just pressed that piece back and now we're ready for our next series um, with a color and two background pieces. And this is our next color. Let me flip this over. We're gonna be sewing it right here to number 23. So, just going to cut that. And then I'll have two 
pieces of background that I need to cut, which are going to be number 24. All right, so let's go sew those down. Okay, so here's the line I just stitched. It is number 23. So I'm going to take 23 and turn it to the right. Fold it back on that seam I just sewed. Place the ruler right against that seam and trim. And now I'll just press this back and I'm ready for the background pieces. Okay, so here is the seam I just sewed. It is right under number 24. So I'm gonna take that 24, turn it to the right I'm going to fold back my template on the line I just sewed on that seam. I am going to place my add an eighth ruler and then trim the excess. And now I'm just going to go and press that seam. Okay, so here is the seam I just sewed. It is the one that is directly under this number 24. So I'll take that 24 and turn it to the right. Fold back my papers on the seam I just sewed. And then I'm going to trim everything in excess of 1 8 of an inch beyond the seam. And I'm going to go and press this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have pressed that down and just like I do in every other video, I'm not going to go through every single color with you. Um, as you can tell, all of the rows are exactly the same. So I'm going to just do a few more and I will come back when we have two or three of the colors left to put on and we will finish this up together. Okay guys, so here we are, and I have two more colors left, um, which are the top two here. And as I was saying when we first started, there are 11 colors in this particular uh, pattern for the four inch. And I was working with 10 colors. So I've made the decision that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my number one pink in both of the last two. It's the smallest pieces and I really like the pink and so I've just made that decision to do it. <laughs> so um, I, the last two pieces I've put on are these two background pieces and the next one that we need to attach is the second to last color. So I'm just going to cut a small piece and then I will cut two pieces of my background. Okay. And now let's take these over to the sewing machine and start sewing those down.
Okay, so I have just sewed on the last piece in our colored uh, rows. And so now um, the we have two more pieces left to put on, that's it. We have number 40 and number 41 because we have just attached number 39. Um, now that's gonna all be background. And so I'm going to want to take my large background piece and it's going to go, um, we're going to be sewing it. Let me see, how does this go? Okay, this was our seam allowance. So I'm going to be sewing, I'm just gonna sew it all the way um, up to this point here. And we do want it to flap over that way. And then this second piece is gonna go on top of that. So let's cut one for here. That's jelly bean down there. Let's see, I don't wanna, well, what, who cares? Here we go. Let's just do it. <laughs> just cut the fabric. <laughs> Oops, I'm getting off the cutting mat here. Okay. So now I'm just gonna give that a quick press just so it doesn't have that bubble in it, but that's me because I'm just, you know, everything's gotta be perfect. <laughs> I'm just kidding guys, um, but I don't like having that bump. So I'll go and get that a quick press and then we'll head back over to the sewing machine to attach these two pieces. Okay, so we have stitched down number 40 first. So I'm going to turn number 40 to my right. I'm gonna fold back um, the paper on the line I stitched. I'm going to place my add an eighth ruler. And as you can see, we have to go through a lot of layers. Um, so I do tend to um, do the trimming a little bit slower. I mean, you don't wanna go, you know, too slow, but you also don't want to go really fast because you could miss some or it's just better in my mind if you go a little bit slower, push just a little bit harder, not not crazy, but uh, to make sure that you get through all the layers the first time. And then I'm going to fold this back and I'm gonna go over and press it. Okay, so this is the last line that I have stitched and when I turn this over, we have number 41, which is the piece I just sewed on. I'm going to turn 41 to the right, fold back the paper on the line I just stitched. And I'm going to put down my add an eighth ruler. press this back and come right back to finish it up. Okay, so I have pressed both sides down and now I just wanna trim it up. Um, so it looks sort of like this. And if you remember, this pink line that I drew is the four inch square. And the lighter line on the outside is the seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and, um, I, I tend to do this, I'm going to, trim it with more than the quarter inch because you want to have as much as possible to work with. That's my mind, especially for these pieces because we are going to be making a decision of what we want to attach them to. If we want to make a tote bag or a zipper bag or a pillow or any number of things that you want to do with it. You want to make sure that you have as much 
fabric to work with as possible. So I am going to trim it up, but I'm going to trim it like, oops, I'm going to use a different ruler. Um, but I'm going to trim it up way out here just to give myself plenty of uh, fabric to work with since I do have it on there. And these pieces I can still reuse. Okay, and on the bottom, I'm just going to clean it up a bit. Okay, so there we go. We have our finished triangle geese and I'm very happy with it. I think it came out wonderful and I can't wait to see all the color choices that you guys have. I'm truly enjoying that part of it. So please keep posting and I will see you next week.